This week, I interview Kozo Ota of the TokyoSwallows.com blog site. And before we get to the interview, a quick introduction to this week's theme. Soon after Samurai Japan defeated the Cuban national team in a warm-up match to the WBC in November of 2012, a headline in the November 21st edition of Nikon Sports caught my eye. It read, Made in Japan, Simpu, or Whirlwind, and featured 12 of the 28 members of the Brazilian team that had just upset Panama by a score of 1 to nothing to qualify for the 2013 World Baseball Classic in March. To help me discuss the Brazilian team, I have Kozo Ota from the TokyoSwallows.com blog. Thank you for joining me today. Thanks for having me, Michael. Um, you are a Yakult Swallows expert, and I thought I'd get a uh, little bit of an idea of the various Yakult Swallows who have contributed to the Brazilian national team who surprised a lot of people, I think, in taking the South American um, kind of last spot uh, going into the 2013 WBC. Sure. Uh, I'd be happy to answer uh, any of the questions that you have. I'm not sure I'd be able to answer all of them, but uh, I'll try my best. <laughs> well, based on what I've seen on the uh, Tokyo Swallows um, blog, I think you'll be plenty fine. <laughs> all right. Um, the uh, first player uh, that... Uh, uh, well, actually, two Yakult Swallows really caught my attention back in 1999 when they were drafted out of Brazil, and those were uh, Sato Tsugio and Matsumoto Yuichi. Right. Actually, you I don't think they were drafted. I think they were signed oh. because back then they were still considered foreign players, which is actually oh. one of the I think uh, you're right there. <laughs> issues uh, about them getting enough playing time in the top team. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know that uh, Tsugio... Um, kind of quit after 2003 or right. was released after 2003 because he was stuck behind Pettigini and Ramirez right. and the foreign player limits. So um, it, it's kind of sad that he had to go, but he's been playing in the um, industrial leagues ever since mm -hmm. then. Um, have you followed him at all since he has gone? No, to actually, uh, Sato Tsuyo was playing uh, before I came to Japan, so uh -huh. I, I've never even seen him uh, oh, okay. uh, live. I, I, I saw him play in the WBC qualifier, but I don't really have any uh, <laughs> much comments besides that he, he seemed to be doing very well in the qualifier, batting fourth and DHing for the team, I think. Okay. Um, well, that that is interesting, um, that he's still very competitive, and, of course, batting fourth is a very great honor for any national mm -hmm. team player. Um, the other one, uh, Yuichi, is, of course, still with Yakult. Yeah. Um, in fact, he had recently signed on for another year, yeah. so he'll be coming back in 2013. Um it seems to me he's kind of been on the decline the last couple of years. He hasn't been getting as much playing time. Yeah, he's he's sort of uh, basically sort of carved out a niche, I guess, as a left-handed pinch hitter mm -hmm. with okay defensive skill. But that the Swallows have a couple of players like that. So, like Takeuchi also is very similar. So I think. He's been somewhat effective coming off the bench, but mm -hmm. <clears throat> I don't think even if a couple of players go down in injury, we'll see, we'll be he'll be getting a lot of playing time at this point in his career. Okay, well, I uh, I still wish him luck and yeah. uh, and I hope that he can continue his career yeah. um, at the top team. Uh, well, based on interviews I've read of him, he seems very humble and okay with his place on. Mm -hmm. on on the team, and may, may, some people may fault him for that and calling that lack of competitive spirit. But I think, uh. <laughs> but then again, that you know, there is a reason why he keeps getting signed, and he, his career has lasted 13 years now. And I think part of that humble, oh, uh, you know, attitude probably has helped him in that way. Mm -hmm. So he's just a good guy to have to have around. Yeah, 
And especially since the Swallows do keep signing uh, these young Brazilian players, having you know a player that's mm-hmm. gone through it and that can speak Portuguese and act as a mentor, no doubt helps the team mm-hmm. as well. So uh, certainly, I, I think keeping Yuichi around is a good idea. Whether giving him more playing time is something that you know <laughs> is maybe not the greatest idea, especially since we mm-hmm. like to develop young talent at this point. Yeah, well, um, they've been signing several Brazilians the past, uh, well, um, several years as Ixe players. Yes. Um, I believe Rafael Fernandez and Hugo Kanabayashi were both signed as Ixe players from Brazil. That's right. But they, so there seems to be a path now that's been made that there, I'm not sure if it still exists, but there is some sort of Brazilian academy or scouting system. Uh, the uh, Swallows. Yes, have. Rafael Fernandez Fernandes. came up through the uh, Swallows. Right. Brazilian but then, Academy. But then they go to university at Hako University, mm-hmm. uh, who, and then they get drafted, so they don't actually uh, take up a foreigner slot. Right, uh, and and I think that that's a very wise move yeah. by Yakult because they don't want to use up those kind of. Um, they want to develop their own players, kind of cheap players, yeah. not and not have them count on the foreign player limit. Yes. So, so yeah, Fernandez and Kanabushi both went to the same university in uh, Japan, and mm-hmm. that also gets them lets them acclimate to Japanese culture without the pressure of being a pro. Yes. Because if I, I think it, apparently Fernandez didn't actually do much pitching, like in game situations for. Uh, Hako, if I if I read correctly, he only got into a couple of games. Yeah, I had uh, my research said that he had won two games in his four years there. Right. Um, so, and and that also kind of keeps him off the radar from other teams, right? <laughs> because Yakult is, you know, sending him to the academy in Brazil and then bringing him over to Japan to play at the university. Yeah. They don't want another team to come over and poach him. Yeah. So keeping a low profile at uh, Haku is is probably a good idea. <laughs> yeah. um, but he has been uh, um, both of them played last year. Yeah. Uh, Kanabayashi, his only game, he walked four batters in two thirds yeah. of the inning. But that... uh, he has been doing pretty well at Nigun. Um, good enough that in his first year, they signed um, him. He went to from a... Ikse to signing the. The regular playing cut, yeah. Yeah, so um, I I kind of see both of these as still developing players mm. and, and having a really good future with Yakult. Yeah, uh, yeah. well, it, it's all, of, especially for Kanabushi, it's whether he can uh, get his control issues uh, <laughs> under control, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, I actually saw him play against, in uh, Toda, uh, against uh, the Nigun Giants, and he was he started off very well, getting a lot of strikeouts and pitching perfectly, and then suddenly giving up uh, three straight walks, and then he gave up a grand slam to Ogasawara, who Ooh, was wow. doing <laughs> doing some time in the, or a lot of time in Nigun last year. So he seems to be the kind of player that when when he's on, he can uh, certainly shut it down, but has uh, serious control issues. And mm-hmm. with, also evidenced by the fact that he gave up four, four straight, more not four straight, but four walks in his uh, top league debut. Yeah. <laughs> That's never going to uh, get you too far <laughs> in this game. Okay. Um, and next up is um, Mike Magario. Mike Magario? Mike, that's yeah. it. It's spelled Mike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's been with Yakult for three years, um, and he's only played at Nigun so far. Well, he's no longer with the team. He actually got Senyoku oh. Guide uh, this off season. Uh, but yes, he was. He he actually played in Koshien, uh, I believe, and made some waves there. And then he got drafted uh, as an Ixay player. Mm-hmm. Uh, he he certainly attracted a lot of attention. <laughs> Maybe not necessarily, well, part, of course, for the baseball, but also if if you if you see him, he sort of looks like Dar- you, Darvish, very tall, oh. thin, very okay. good-looking player. 
but I think more most re most recently when he was with in Toda, he was just a defensive replacement, and not getting too many at bats, and just after mm -hmm. three years, I guess the Swallows were ready to move on. Yeah, well, um, when he came up, he was billed as uh, Boom Boom Modernise. Right. Uh, so um, that he didn't work out is kind of disappointing, but I'm glad that he is playing for the national team and uh, kind of representing Yakult there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I although I think he he's played in all three games, but I think he's he's always come in as sort of as a late late inning defensive replacement in the outfield. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's actually gotten an at bat uh, in the World Baseball Classic qualifiers. So I'm I'm actually more I'm, I'm sort of interested to see what he decides to do, whether he wants to continue a career maybe in the industrial leagues here or. Or or what what he plans to do next because he's still a pretty young guy. Uh huh. Like he must be in his really early twenties if he got drafted out of high school and played three years. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so, well, you know, Tsugio has gone on to uh, the industrial leagues, yeah. and he's been a what is it a fixture at shortstop, um, and number four batter for many years in the industrial leagues. So. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, even in the industrial leagues, I tend to think of as a kind of minor league for Japanese baseball. Right. But uh, Sugio has been there for so long now that he can't really be considered a um, a, pr a prospect anymore. I, I no, well, but I guess he's more of an elder statesman at this point. <laughs> <laughs> and um, also, kind of like his uh, um, Doki, um, same year play yeah. player uh, Yuichi, he can act as a, an ambassador to help um, introduce yeah. the uh, Shakai League baseball to. Uh, New Brazilians coming over. Yeah, well, I, he, I believe he plays for Yamaha. And Yamaha, I believe, yes. Yeah, and I believe there are a couple of other Brazilian players on that team. So, mm -hmm. um, so. And a couple other who were on the Brazilian national team, exactly. I think. Exactly. So certainly uh, I think what he's acting as the elder statesman uh, for that team as mm -hmm. well. Your cult seems to have created a pipe with Brazil... And they're going through Hakuo University yeah. and, to Yakult and also uh, Yamaha Baseball Club right. is kind of a, a number member of that. Uh, <laughs> it, it's kind of becoming an organization. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, there, I, I believe there are other Bra uh, Brazilian players scattered around the industrial leagues as well, and other yes, there universities are. and high schools. But <laughs> certainly, there certain certain institutions have definitely been open, more open, perhaps, to having Brazilians or actively court them more than mm -hmm. than others. Do you have anything? Uh, any other um, things you'd like to add? About the Brazilian national team, well, how far I, I, do you think they'll make it? Well, they're in the they're in the first group A pool A with Japan, Cuba, and China. Is is that correct? Japan, Cuba, and let's see, Korea wasn't in it. No, Korea is in the other. It would it would be China or China or or Taiwan. Taiwan. Uh, let me see if I can call that up. Quickly. Now that you mention it. <laughs> Well, e either way, my impression of that group is it would be uh, very tough to get get overcome either Japan or Cuba uh, just to get second place, which would allow them to uh, advance into the next round. And but I wish them the best. They are they they are the team I, the second team I'm uh, cheering for in this World Baseball mm -hmm. Classic after Canada. I'm not actually that interested in the Japanese team <laughs> because of the lack of swallows, as it were. So, oh yes, <laughs> <laughs> I understand that. Uh, there's a lack of base stars as well. Right. So, although may maybe maybe they those players will be able to concentrate on spring camp and. <laughs> 
and uh, Japan, Cuba, China, and Brazil. Right. So, so certainly I Brazil guess... can beat China. Not that I know too much about China, but they're still mm-hmm. a very young baseball nation. But uh, I think it would be considered an upset if they are able to beat out either Cuba or uh, Japan for the other slot to uh, mm-hmm. to uh, the uh, second round. But I. I yeah, but if they Japan make it to Tokyo, Dome, are I'll definitely be, the favored yeah. too. But if they can um, somehow uh, Tokyo Dome, I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> you you are going to Fukuoka Dome? I'm that I'm not sure about. I'm still trying to plan plan that out right now. But if they make it to the Tokyo Dome, I'll definitely be there. Yeah, I I know I'd certainly like to go, mm-hmm. but um, highly unlikely. <laughs> <laughs> um, and. Uh, I guess that wraps it up. Um, and thank you for joining me. Newman san recently posted that we should have uh, the next blogger meetup at uh, Nami chan's new restaurant in Nopungi. Okay. At uh, probably the end of the year. Okay. Well, I, so, I'd love to be invited. And uh... <laughs> I hope you can make it then. <laughs> and uh, see you around. Yep. Have Take care. Good, have a good day. Thank you for you having too. me. Bye bye. Bye bye. John and Jim will be releasing their first podcast of the new year tomorrow, January 14th, 2013. I hear that they're going to be discussing Fukudome joining the Hanshin Tigers and Hideki Matsui retiring from baseball, among other topics. And speaking of podcasts, Kozo's compatriot at TokyoSwallows.com, David Wadkins. It tells me that they're going to try to get a podcast out by the end of this month, then hopefully monthly thereafter. Otherwise, teams are having their new players move into the dormitories, but nothing really starts until next month. And I'd like to thank you for joining me as that wraps up this week's Pro Yaku Report. Take care. Take care.